Today, we meet one of America's crown jewels, Kim Zemeskel. This Olympian world and U.S. national champion comes to Columbus to win a third consecutive U.S. crown. Coached by the same Bella Caroli that gave us Mary Lou Retton and Nadia Comaneci. Zemeskel's teammate and the woman who won silver last year at the Nationals, Carrie Strug, has the will to crush Kim. The two teammates vaulting onto a collision course with only the gold medal held in the balance. The hopes and dreams of Betty Aquino dashed at the hands of yet another injury. She will spend today at home. Shannon Miller is here in body and spirit, but today only the spirit is willing following her recent elbow surgery. For Shannon, it's the road back to a healthy body as injuries influence the ebb and flow of competition. In their stead, a collection of fresh, precious faces may well surprise. Such talents as Dominique Dawes, Michelle Campy, and Kim Kelly. The men, too, have much to prove here at the Nationals. Trent Demas comes to Columbus to erase the image of last year's crash, which so vividly remains in all our minds. The pressure to prove to himself and to the world what he is truly made of. John Roethlisberger tried and failed to handle the pressure last year at the championships. This year, he's back to regain the national title he had lost. Chris Waller, the reigning national champion, also here in defense of his throne. With power and force, Scott Keswick, the highest ranked American gymnast, tries for his first national title. 1988 and 1992 Olympian Lance Ringald returns to the spotlight for the first time since his injury at Worlds. He too has something to prove. The competitive torch is lit with the burning desire to be the best, to be America's best. And it's all right here, right now. It is springtime in Columbus, Ohio. We are here in Columbus today, the National Gymnastics Championships on the campus of Ohio State University in St. John Arena. Today we bring you the finals of the women's all-around competition. I'm John Tesh along with Elfie Schlegel and Tim Daggett, our expert commentators. We're getting set to watch two-time national champion Kim Zemeskel defend her title. And she is joined by the man who has helped bring her here, Bella Caroli. Nadia, Mary Lou were his students before Kim Zemeskel. Let's go down to Beth Ruyak, who's on the gym floor. Thanks, John. What's been on everyone's lips and minds and echoes through every competition is that this is the best women's team the USA has ever had. And the expectations of these young women intensified after they brought home the silver team medal from the World Championships. And what's amazing is that the story now is suddenly different. It's about Betty Aquino, the fourth best gymnast in the world who's not here because of a back injury. It's about Shannon Miller, who won compulsories yesterday, but is not competing today because she wants to give more time to an elbow injury. Have the these women found, at least temporarily, a limit to the physical and mental intensity that they can endure. Shannon Miller knows the time is now, striving for a dream that must be fulfilled. Her only menace, the elbow surgery and that telltale scar. Can she work through the pain? Can she be that strong? Shannon came to Columbus to prove her worth now more than ever. And that she did, just enough to let everyone know how strong she really is. She burst through the compulsories with spectacular poise, a true challenger for the national throne. By the end of the day, she was in first place. Would the momentum continue? Would she compete in optionals tomorrow? <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, that was beautiful. Shannon, if he asks your opinion, do you want to go for it or not tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. When tomorrow came, Shannon's spirit, still high from the thrill of yesterday, was saying, let's do it again. But there was a lot more to consider. So this morning, as the others awaited her decision, Shannon practiced her full optional routines for the first time since her surgery just five weeks ago. Just like last night, her elbow looked strong, but maybe that wasn't enough. 
And so the decision was made. Sir. This fine young lady right here is going to scratch uh, the optional session of the meet. I just wanted to make it official to you. Okay. And I uh, want to make sure that you had the rotation squared away so the uh, kids can get to take up their time. Okay. Well, thank you for letting us know. All right. Shannon Miller with her coach, Steve Nuno. Right, let's go on in. That was then and now that puts Kim Zemeskel in first place. But the strange thing is, John, that no matter what Kim Zemeskel does here today, and Bella Caroli knows this, Shannon beat Kim Zemeskel. Here's a look at the standings after the compulsories. And again, Shannon Miller with that injury is out. So Kim Zemeskel, two-time defending champion, is the athlete to beat. Vault, uneven bars, balance beam, and floor exercise, the four disciplines, not necessarily in that order, that the women will compete here in the optionals. Dominique Dawes standing eighth after the compulsories. And I remember last year, guys, on the floor exercise at National, she brought the house down. Before that, not a lot of people knew who this athlete was. Now, last year was her coming out party. This year, a totally different situation. She missed the World Championships last year. She missed out on that experience. Here's the vault. I can't think of a better event for Dominique to start things off with. This is a strong apparatus for her. Your chenko full, but as you can see, she was slightly offside, and we'll get a good chance to see that in the replay. The whole vault was very well executed, but right there, you can see she's moving well over to the right. That is a, a slight deduction. Waiting for her score, six judges, the high and low will be thrown out. A 9.8 for Dominique. Now, the ladies get two chances at the vault, and you're able to keep the higher score. You know, that 9-8 is a good score. It'll certainly keep her in the top six, but it's not the type of score that'll contend with a Kim Zemeskel. Again, she's eighth after the compulsories. They count 60%. These optionals count 40%. Here's her second ball. Up, took a step there. Well, John, that was the same vault, obviously not as well performed as the first one. And at this level of competition, you really need to zero in on those landings. There's a score for the second vault, a 9.75, and you can see it on her face. The machine that is 16-year-old Kim Zemeskel, two-time national champion, the first American to win a world championship all-around title. Getting ready for her vault, and coached, of course, by Bella Caroli. Textbook perfect. Look at Bella. <laughs> I think she stunned that him. That's not easy to do. She has improved on this event since the World Championships last year. Look at that. Everything is straight down the line. Perfect execution. And she sticks the landing. A perfect 10. Kim Zemeskel with her seventh perfect 10 in her career. And she's going to vault again. <laughs> See if she can get two here. Was that better than the first one? Yeah. That was something. That was something. Here's a replay usually reserved for coaches who watch their team win the Super Bowl. <laughs> An isolated camera on Bella Caroli after that ball. Another 10. Kim Zemeskel with another perfect score on the vault. And congratulations from her teammate, Hillary Grivich. This Bella with his wife, Marta Caroli. It was the balance beam coach. And now it's time but for Carrie Strug. Freedom, so Bella switches snap, gears. Portion, everything. Is that right? This is the young yes. lady who challenged Kim Zemeskel for the national title last year. Made it very close. Well, Carrie is the national champion on vault, but there's one thing she has yet to learn that Kim has already mastered, and that is that mental confidence, that focus that she uses on each and every apparatus. Well, you heard a wow from Bella, and it was extremely high. She got a lot of lift off that horse. It's the same type of vault we've been watching all the women perform so far today. Incredible lift off the horse. Take a look at the block right there. Beautiful lines, nice and high. Just that hop on the landing is really going to hurt her score. Score from the six judges, a 9-9. Excellent score for Carrie Strug. 
She's in fourth entering the optionals and scores like that could move her up nicely. Preparing for her second ball now. Again, a second beautiful ball, but as we mentioned, what it's going to take to score those perfect tens, as we saw Kim do, is stick the landing. Everything else was really well done. And a 9-9, the same as her first. Moving across the floor now to balance beam. This is Michelle Campy. We remind you that there are four exercises going on at once here, in four disciplines. She is in third place after compulsories. And again, another face you may not have seen. The balance beam, we remind you, is four feet high and four inches wide. Michelle is an interesting story. She actually did not make the world championship team last year. She was the third alternate, but basically she performed in all the practices leading up to the championships, and she had the look that Bella wanted. And what Bella wants, <laughs> I don't need to finish that. Big skills for her opening line. What you'll notice in Michelle's routine is she's not only a beautiful dancer, but she'll take advantage of her flexibility and her long lines. Michelle's aunt is a former ballet dancer, and she says she gets her balletic style. Ooh. That was a major break. That connection was supposed to be much tighter. You know, on balance beam, you have to keep an even flow, and when you have major breaks like that, the judges are just going to kill you. That's what she does so beautifully. She takes advantage of her flexibility, and there was a great display of that. Moving right into another acrobatic skill. All that's left is her dismount, and with the one mistake already, she really has to nail this dismount. 9-5-2-5. John, at this level of competition, that score is a disaster. That is going to drop her severely. Already one perfect 10 on the vault. What does Kim Zemeskel have in store for us on the uneven bars? Coming up is her first major release move. Beautiful height, but she was far too close to the bar. That stopped her momentum when she got to the low bar. That's her second release skill. Now watch the height on her dismount. This is what Kim is so well known for. Every time Kim Zemeskel does anything, this crowd just goes crazy. But look at Bella. He is nowhere near as excited after that bar routine as he was when Kim vaulted. Right, let's take a look and see what went wrong here. Well, this was Kim's first release skill. Now she takes it way up in the air, but almost hangs on a little bit too long. Just a tad bit, she almost hits the bar. Let's see what the judge is. 9, 6, 7, 5. Not Kim Zemeskel quality of a score. It was one year ago when Strug was challenging for the gold medal. Very, very tight race with Zemeskel. And in a controversial move, Caroli had Carey take out a very important part of her routine. And many people think it cost her a chance for the gold. And that important part of her routine was a complete change in her dismount. There's her first release skill. Now coming up is her second. It's a new one for Carey. Same as Kim's Meskel. Oh, much better performed. And this is the dismount she took out last year. Full twisting, double back. And a much different reaction from her coach, Bella Caroli, than the one he had That's for Zemeskel. That's supposed to look like they were Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. That's how it's supposed to be. Carrie Strug's score for uneven bars is up a 9.75. Well, that score is way too low. There's no way that score reflects that wonderful routine. Better than Zemeskel's 9.675, and that should tighten things up a little bit in the competition. So this is Kim Kelly, the oldest competitor that we've seen so far at 18 years old. She sets up for her vault. Definitely something Kim has to work on with steps like that. That is going to be very difficult. We'll wait for her score, but she has one more opportunity. Once again, the women get two balls and take the higher of the scores. Kim has her work cut out for her. Here's another challenger. 
Dominique Dawes, who was getting ready for the uneven parallel bars. A 9.75 for her first fall. Well, you can see her fight for the landing. She still had a major hop. It'll still be a deduction, but it was slightly better than the first. A 9-8, a better score for Kim. So she's able to redeem herself on the vault. Next up is Dominique Dawes in seventh place after the first rotation. A young lady who's really out of the mainstream of gymnastics. She lives with her coach. It's been her... <laughs> it's one way to get a drink of water has been very close to her coach, and her coach has really become her surrogate mom of sorts. She really just electrified the crowd at Nationals last year. And As you mentioned, John, last year she wowed the audience on floor exercise. This is not an apparatus that she's known for. And I had a chance to talk to Kelly Hill, and she said she's put in a lot of work on this event. routine is much improved over last year. Obviously, all that hard work has paid off. There's her coach, Kelly Hill, and now you know why her teammates call her Awesome Dawson. There was a lot of twisting and turning. There's a giant fall right on top of the bar. That's what made the difference in this routine. She only had one release skill, unlike Carrie and Kim, who had two. A 9.775 for Dominique Dawes, which is the highest score we've seen so far on the uneven parallel bars. Kim Zameskel. Kim has already turned in a perfect 10 on the vault, and she is still in the process of decimating the field. She is ready for her balance beam routine. Kim is the all-around world champion, but she's added a new title. Just recently in Paris, she picked up the world title on this apparatus. This is one of the toughest competitors you will find anywhere last year. She defended her national crown with a stress fracture in her wrist. She's getting set for her big acrobatic skill. Take the entire length of the beam. Solid. I think a lot of people were wondering how Kim would fare in international competition until she took the all-around title at the World Championships. We got a chance to see her against the best in the world. Lest you forget, this thing is four inches wide. She is certainly right on track, isn't she? Well, this is a new skill, first performed at the American Cup. Again, she's right on. All that's left is the dismount. She is hot stuff, not just in terms of physical ability, but mental ability as well. Congratulations there from Marta Caroli, the balance beam coach. Zameskel has been unbeatable on three pieces of apparatus so far. Good job. Good job. This is Kim's trademark move. It's what she's so well known for all over the world. It's a press to handstand. She moves into a very unique skill it's called a planche. Now, maybe this skill is done by a lot of athletes around the world, but she is so steady. She is like a rock on this every time. The score from the six judges, high and low thrown out, a 9-9, nine, nine, one-tenth away from perfection for Kim Zemesko. And so we shall return to the women's competition after we check in on how the men fare in this year's nationals. We begin by meeting two tough competitors, Trent Demas and Lance Ringnald. Beth Ruyak has the story. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, Lance and Trent train together and share the challenge of a comeback. They're together about as much as two guys can be. It happened all at once for Trent, a crash on the vault and a series of crashes in his personal life. He seriously thought about quitting gymnastics. And then there's Lance. He had torn his shoulder muscle. Mending his muscle and his psyche meant a lot of changes, especially in his perspective. The injury, even looking back now, 
was such a positive thing for me. You know, I think that I wasn't really liking gymnastics a whole lot at the World Championships in 91 before the injury. It's because I'd been doing it for so long. I was tired, my body hurt. I was kind of confused in why am I doing gymnastics. I got off track a little bit. And the attitude I'm taking now is hit or miss, I, I can do it, I'm capable again. And that's the good feeling. That that's what the sport's all about. That's when I was 10 years old. That's, that's what I started. I started because it was fun and got you know, off track, went up and down throughout my career, and the injury knocked me back on my butt, said, go back, you know, look at the basics, and that's what I did. It's ironic. Last year, these two were rivals. They fought, and they were jealous of each other. This year, they're a team motivating each other, proud for each other. Well, when Trent came in there, I had someone to compare to. You know, his strong events, I was like, I need to work harder here. You know, and, and that kind of camaraderie and pushing the athlete a little further, that's what you need in sport, and that's what I get from Trent. Trent's accident is a snapshot in so many people's memories. At last year's Nationals, when it happened, he says he was competing for all the wrong reasons. Going to the competition, it was like, uh, it, was, it was kind of between both Lance and I. We were both very burnt out. We had competed a lot of competitions in the past year. We were very, very tired, and uh, it was just like, I was in it for the money, you know, I wanted to get it over with, I wanted to be able to subsidize myself for the next six months, and um, it was just like, I don't want to compete, but I have to because I want to survive. So here it is, one year ago. And somehow, Trent Dima summoned the courage to try it again. A character means a lot to me. You know, I wanted to show people that, no, I'm not a quitter. You know, I never have been, and I won't be. And so I thought, you know, I just got to do it again, because if I, if I wouldn't have done it then, I probably wouldn't be doing that vault today. I yeah, know now that could never happen again because it's just I've trained it too hard I mean my mental frame now is a lot different than it was last year I know what I have to do I know what I've done I've trained it very hard there's nothing that can stand in my way right now nothing so you loaded into your brain what would you be thinking here is Trent Demas as he prepared for his vault here at the national championships All the thoughts, all the memories of past experiences, the horrors of last year. He's got to deal with them. And you heard him say it when he hit the ground. He thought he was paralyzed. The critical thing when you're dealing with something like this vault is you must be precise, exact. And he dealt with it well. And so that vault was in the third rotation. Demas getting by not only a physical, but a mental hurdle. <laughs> and still able to clown around for the camera. Let's take a moment and show you the standings after three rotations of six that the men compete in. Scott Keswick up top. There's Demas and Lance Ringnall down there, sixth and eighth. Kurt Thomas in 16th place. Now here's a good look at Chris Waller, our defending champion, who is in fifth place. He's getting set for his performance on the high bar. This is a great event for Chris Waller. A lot of pressure in this competition, though. John Roethlisberger last year did not deal well at all with being the defending champion. Watch this right here. Full spin right into another one, all on one arm. He'll do three releases. First one right here. Very nicely done. He's got two more to do, though. These are in sequence. Beautiful. Right now at this point, he is thinking dismount. Gotta land it. It's a tough one. Two twists, two flips. Yeah! And a great landing. This from a gentleman who has undergone open heart surgery. As a high school sophomore, surgeons replaced a defective aorta 
with a Teflon aorta. Score for Waller a 9-8, and that could very well move him up. There they are, the rings, and they wait for this man, John Roethlisberger. That's his dad, Fred Roethlisberger, his coach. John is in second place as he begins his fourth rotation. And remember last year, John tried to defend his national title and did not deal with the pressure well at all. And that's being kind. There was foot stomping, hand slamming, tears, arguing between dad slash coach and son slash athlete. And that's a good point. You know, I discussed this with John and he says his relationship with his father and coach has changed a little bit since then. He says his dad believes in him a little bit more and lets him make a few more of the decisions on his own. And so far, it is certainly paying off. This is a great ring routine so far. Just the big dismount. Two twists, two flips. Yeah! Oh, <laughs> boy. There's a strength move right there. <laughs> oh, God, was that pretty. It's all smiles this year. And this dismount right here, certainly the major reason why. One of the most difficult being done in the world today. He'll do two flips, two twists, try to spot the ground, and look at this, this is a fighter right there. Fights for every single tenth. It says it right there. 9-7, ooh, that seems a little low for that. That's a pretty good routine. I don't know exactly where they deducted. You know, it's up to the judge whether they want to take a deduction for all that arm swinging or not. Our leader right now, after three rotations, is Scott Keswick from Las Vegas, Nevada. And Scott actually just narrowly missed winning a medal at the World Championships on this event, the high bar. He finished second at the American Cup, and his 10 on rings places him as the only active U.S. male gymnast to score a perfect mark in international competition. Watch his first set of releases right here. Right into a beautiful flyaway half. Very nicely done. Oh, he's Edge. in trouble. Again. Oh, oh boy, you hear his coach, Yafim, telling him to do the skill again. He has to do that. Oh, he's in. Oh! Ow. Oh boy, that hurts. He hit that okay, bar. Okay. Good, okay. Now, John, he has 30 seconds to remount the high bar. If he can. If he cannot mount the high bar, then he is in serious trouble. Jam, period, starter, period, and triple. And Yafim telling him he has to redo the skill again. And that's critical because that part that he's already attempted twice and fallen on the second time is a required element on the high bar. He must perform that. One more time right here. Deals with it well. Now, John, after that fall, he has got to do one of the most difficult dismounts in the world, a triple back somersault right here. Three flips, one, two, three. Oh, and just a little bit short on the landing end. You see the grimace on the face there. I'm giving him a 10 for courage, though. If that's me, I'm not getting back up on that bar after that. He was our leader before this event. That will take him right out of that first place spot. Let's see if we can see what goes wrong. He just shoots his body out a Ow. little bit early and, oh, tries to make a compensation. But on that particular skill, it is a compensation you cannot make. He tries to pull his body over the bar. His shoulders do what we call in-locate, and he just slams down on top of that bar, and that is hard steel. A 9.0 for Scott, but more importantly, is he okay? He's in the training room now. Get him checked out and see what's, what the story is here. We're dealing, of course, not only with the physical problem, but a devastating mental injury right there as well. Here's a man who can relate to that, Lance Ringnald, who hurt himself severely in the 1991 World Championships. That's right, actually had to drop out of the competition, was on the still rings and felt something go. Said it sounded like Velcro tearing. Well, something tore, it wasn't Velcro. It was his pectoralis major tendon. Every routine you do after a major injury like Lance has been through, there's always just a little bit of a thought, a thread in the back of your mind is everything going to be okay? Double pike dismount and a small hop on the landing. 
a little bit of a conservative routine for Lance. He's had to change his difficulty a little bit, be a little bit more conservative throughout the exercise, but he does meet all the requirements. We'll look at that one more time. You notice the legs touch the bar. That is a deduction on the parallel bars. 9.45 for Lance. A lot of low scores on the P-bars. Roethlisberger is getting set for the vault. And there you see the graphic, our current leader. One vault for the men. Remember, the women get two vaults, and they're allowed to take the best of the two. The men get one chance. He'll do a vault called the Double Twisting Sukahara, named after a famous Japanese gymnast. Needs a tremendous amount of push off the horse to get all of this done in one piece of air. Great push and a good landing. Boy, that is very much improved. Nice, nice landing. Nice landing, John. You never last year heard a lot of that from, from John's dad and coach. No, just a little bit different. Excellent push, two twists, and just the smallest of hops on that landing. That's one of the more difficult vaults being done today. From this view right here, you'll see that his body leaves the horse, actually flips about one and a half times around with two twists. So John Roethlisberger, 1990 national champion, appears to be on a roll, 975 for his vault. Remember you were talking about the pressure that was going to be put on Scott Keswick after that fall on the high bar, well here it is. Floor exercise. And this has not been a great event for Scott Keswick. He was doing very well at the American Cup. Had a good routine going. His last pass, major problem, put both of his hands down on the floor. But he's in some pain right now, and he's got to generate a tremendous amount of power right here. Well, he dealt with that well. Let's see how this goes, though. Watch, he's got to roll out of this skill. Oh, gosh. Scott actually learned gymnastics in Tehran, Iran, when he was a youngster. His dad was stationed in the Middle East of the Air Force. You can see a lot of grimacing going on, especially when Scott had to roll out of that skill and then dropping down into the split. You know, a lot of muscles and tendons attach Unfortunately, right where Scott crashed down onto the bar, and he's got to land right on them one more time again, right here. But this is one tough gymnast. A couple of years ago, I don't know if Scott Keswick could have dealt with this mentally. Physically, yeah, but mentally, I don't know. Last tumbling pass. Great dismount, boy. He dealt with that very, very well. And he dealt with a lot of things, Tim. The pressure and the pain. And I spoke with Scott before this competition, and he said, I am going to win this national championships. He obviously knew halfway through that high bar routine that that dream was not going to come true, but he's got to get through all of his exercises. Watch this double laid out somersault. Very nicely done. Sigh of relief on his face right there. But right now, Keswick playing from second place behind Roethlisberger, and that score of 9-7 should keep him right there. As you take a look at Trent Demas preparing himself for the high bar routine. We showed you that picture earlier of his disaster last year on the vault where he crashed on his head. After that, he lost his funding when he fell in the rankings. He and his fiance broke up. His life was a mess by his own admission. And he says he lost his will to compete in the sport of gymnastics. But Trent is the kind of guy that the U.S. needs on their team. The international judges know him. He has a reputation around the world. And we'll see why in just one minute here. As Lance, watch this. He does a Kovacs also. Oh my, that is so high. So spectacular. He'll do two more releases as well. Toes, toes, toes. Hear the coach saying, toes, toes. Make sure you kick your feet. Oh, there's a small error right there. Should have shot right to the handstand immediately. His coach giving him just some quick coaching hints. Triple back somersault. Yeah! Oh, he stuck that. Yes! Woo! 
You did it, Demas! <laughs> Dismount here, triple back somersault. You'll notice that he actually has an extra crash pad there. Because this is such a difficult dismount, he's allowed to use that. But he's got to stick it to move into that coveted sixth place. A 9-9 nine -nine for Trent Demas. What a great score, and that will lift him certainly out of eighth place. No place to hide. One event left. Roethlisberger in first place. Lance and Trent have both moved up one position. 21-year-old John Roethlisberger, who won the national championship in 1990. And as we've alluded to all through this championship, had some awful problems last year, not only on the events, but also with his dad, it seemed. Seems like not that long ago, when the two of them were not smiling like they are today. It seemed like one event after another, and this was the scene. He'd come off the gym floor, pounding the tables, stomping so his feet. It's not you. It's just got you. I don't know why. You know, I can't. A fall from the high bar, miscalculated, just inches away, but it might as well be miles. He had come to defend his national title, and for most of the competition, he was left in tears. And so today, here and now, Fred Roethlisberger watches his son on, and the athlete that he is training poised to win his second on, national Johnny. championship. And you know, parallel bars really isn't one of John's better events, but it is an event where catastrophe usually will not strike. Well, the way this works is if he gets a 9-5 here or better, he makes it mathematically impossible for Scott Keswick to beat him and take the gold medal away from him. And that's really not that tall of an order for a gymnast of his caliber. Last year, though, he played it a little bit conservative in this type of situation, and frankly, this routine is not all that jam-packed with difficulty. Oh, and there's an error right there, a mental error. He's a little bit off balance now. His dismount, see if he can recoup. Oh, a little bit off there, Ooh. too. Oh. So here's a question. Does, has he left any room for Scott Keswick? That should do it, John. Well, that, it is close. I got to tell you that right now his father and coach is saying, I think it's enough, but he could have opened the door right there. Waiting along with you to see what the judges have in mind for John Roethlisberger. Will he have a chance for a 9-5, which does, in fact, make it mathematically impossible for Scott Keswick to take the gold away from him. So he's our national champion. So here are the final standings for the men's championship as we now return to the exciting conclusion of the women's competition. Kim Zameskel is leading with Kerry Strug following in second. Kim Kelly third. Michelle Campy and Dominique Dawes not far behind. So let's head back to the floor where Carrie Strug is about to perform her balance beam exercise. Carrie so far has been right on. She's hit two events, this being the third and perhaps one of the most difficult events for Carrie. You can see her taking just a little bit of time getting set up for her big acrobatic skill. Stay, stay. Bella Wilder to stay on the beam at that moment. You know, after the World Championships in Paris, Carrie said that it's frustrating to see Kim Zameskel. She performs so well in competitions, whereas she feels she's better in practice than Kim is. Mentally, it's the biggest obstacle for Carrie. Well, she'll put that mental power to test right here. This is a new skill for Carrie. It's a combination. Oh, oh that, that's a tough skill. The difference here, the American beans are square edges, whereas the European beans have a rounder edge, and obviously it hurts a lot more on a bean like this. Lean around. Just a dismount. 
the step there. Well, you can see Bella's not running up to her. He knows there were some severe flaws in this routine. Yeah, they didn't go for the handspring either. Here it is right here. It's a tough one. There are a lot of women performing this skill, but what makes the difference is right here, being able to just nail the landing. And you heard Bella earlier say, stay on, stay on, and you want to do what Bella says. <laughs> or else. 965, which pretty much eliminates any challenge to Kim Zameskel. Dominique Dawes needs a 9625 to move into fifth place. Dominique is quite capable of receiving a very high score on this event. She has tons of difficulty and just don't take your eyes off of this routine because there's something very big in each of her lines. Dominique was forced to withdraw from the world team trials last year with an injured heel. This is not the type of event you want to have an injured heel on. And look at her right ankle. You can see her heel is taped here. She started off with a very big move, a great combination of layouts, but what makes this routine so unique, she does a variety of skills. Here's a very different look. Oh, what makes that so tough is it's a blind landing. Dominique can't see the beam until her feet actually land. You can see her take a little bit of a pause right there. She's setting up for something extremely big. One of the few women in the world to perform this dismount is very powerful and very difficult. Wow, now that is awesome. A lot of pressure for this 15-year-old from Silver Spring, Maryland, but she really responded right there. She handled this pressure in a big way. This is a great skill. As I said, a blind move, really well done. Just a superb element. But the dismount is what really made this routine. I can't tell you how difficult this is on just four inches of balance beam. John, she looks like she's tumbling on floor exercise. This is not her best event that is yet to come, floor exercise, where she has in international competition scored a 10. 9-9 nine, nine for the balance beam, Dominique. That, along with Kim Zemeskel's score, are the best scores today on beam. There's one more exercise to go for these women as we look at the standings. So as a finale to this Nationals competition, we've put together a compendium of some of the most beautiful and crowd-pleasing routines of the floor exercise. And these top gymnasts use this opportunity to really show off some of their most spectacular skills. Current third place holder, Michelle Campy, displaying beautiful ballet style. She does run into a problem here, stepping out and losing points, and ending up with a disappointing 9.475. Here is Carrie Strug, currently second. She has upgraded her difficulty for floor exercise. Looking to overtake Kim Zemeskel, who is in first. She might just be able to achieve that goal with a finish like this, a full twisting double back. Carrie's routine receives a score of 9.825. Now here's Dominique Dawes in fourth place. This is her event. She has scored a perfect 10 in international competition for floor exercise. And she tied the current world champion Kim Zemeskel in last year's nationals. That's worth taking another look. This is everyone's favorite pass. Big double twist. She's not finished yet. 
she continues onto a very difficult double back. That's a lot of tumbling. And for all this near flawless tumbling, Dominique receives a score of 9.9. .9. Kim Zameskel, the current leader, going into her last routine. This is quite a tumbling pass. Oh, she does just step out, giving her a tenth deduction. This is Kim's trademark tumbling pass. She fits a lot of tumbling in here. Three whip backs, the only one in the world to perform this skill. Nails it. And so Kim ends up with almost a perfect 10. She receives a 9.9. .9. So if it weren't for her stepping out, it would have been a perfect 10. Ending a perfect day for her as she comes out on top again, the third year in a row for Kim Zameskel as U.S. Nationals Champion. And to all the athletes here at the Nationals, congratulations. You are indeed America's best.